Let's also uh, touch base with uh, Julian Evans, uh, who's joining us right here to talk about how the environment globally is shaping up when it comes to the market mode, when it comes to the sell-off that has been taking place for quite a few days now. Julian, hi, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, given how uh, the trade war once again has, uh, you know, uh, resumed uh, 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 center stage and uh, there's also a major reaction coming in from Europe, from US, from Asia uh, because of the escalated trade tensions. How are you assessing the market environment right now? Do you believe the tension is likely to continue for more months? Well, I mean, obviously, I think markets are quite surprised about how quickly uh, things have escalated. I mean, Trump's uh, announcement of an additional 10% tariff on, on uh, imports from China on uh, Friday uh, was a bit of a surprise. And then we had the uh, surprise um, move in the Romanby on Monday that breached seven against the dollar, uh, which uh, was clearly an intentional uh, move in, in terms of uh, retaliation um, against the U.S., um, I guess the question now is whether um, you know things escalate further. I think it's quite likely. I mean, we we had Trump now uh, label China a currency manipulator, um, which will only uh, you know further uh, strain uh, bilateral relations between the two countries. Um, so uh, you know, our view is that uh, further tariffs are probably likely, further retaliation from China, um, which markets are not going to uh, take well. Right. But do you think that markets are completely surprised as far as, uh, you know, this sort of uh, currency move from China is concerned? It's something which the markets were not prepared for? Well, the assumption uh, among most analysts was that um, the People's Bank would defend seven against the dollar um, as long as there remained a uh, hope of some kind of trade deal with the U.S. because there was an implicit understanding um, that China should... Uh, support its currency uh, and not devalue its currency as long as the trade negotiations are ongoing. Um, and, you know, we had expected those trade negotiations to break down eventually, uh, but not this soon. Um, and so we expected that devaluation to come next year. So it was, it was a bit of a surprise uh, to come so soon. And I think uh, a, lot of, a lot of other market participants were also uh, surprised by the timing of the move. For, you know, all the developments that are taking place quite rapidly uh, and how markets are reacting to it, how are you assessing a commodity space like a crude or a gold for that matter? Do you think these are some uh, areas to focus on for the, for the next few, uh, uh, you know, for, over the medium term? Well, I think, uh, you know, commodity prices have... Uh, generally responded negatively, negatively every, every time there's been an escalation uh, in the trade tensions uh, alongside equities. Um, I think some commodity, uh, commodities are more vulnerable than others. Um, oil is you know, vulnerable to um, you know, weakening trade volumes and the slowdown of the global economy uh, to some degree. But I think the main commodity that, that, that's vulnerable is actually uh, iron ore, um, which has had a very big rally recently driven by you know, very strong construction activity in China. Um, but we're starting to see some signs that that, that uh, momentum in, in China's property sector is starting to weaken. We got some quite clear messages from the uh, Politburo in China saying that they won't use property uh, as, a, as a form of short-term stimulus. And so I think a lot of the sort of props that have been supporting iron ore uh, for the past uh, year or so are, are now fading and, and there's some major risk there. Right. Uh, just in terms of valuation for emerging markets, how would you look at it? You would look at it that they are at the lower end of where it is expected or when earnings cut come in because of the slowdown, it will start to look uh, neutral to expensive? Well, I think valuations are still on the high end, but I, I think in the short run, uh, you know, valuations are clearly not what, uh, what drives day-to-day -day market movements. Um, and I think that, you know, the main concern in our view is that uh, – U.S. stocks and, and developed market stocks still look, um, you know, the valuations there still look very stretched. They still look vulnerable to, to a slowdown in the, in the global economy. Uh, and every time that we've seen a major sell-off uh, in uh, S&P, which is what we expect later this year, we've also seen a, a similar uh, sell-off in, in EM markets. And I think certainly EM markets are not uh, vulnerable to, uh, to, to a sell-off in the U.S. Complete.
All right, Julian. Thank you so much for joining us and for talking to us about a whole host of uh, issues surrounding the markets globally at this point and how one should read into the movement seen in the commodity space as well in that light.